everybody. I'm Allison from Puget Sound Garden Life and we're here at my house and it's May 31st and I haven't done a garden tour in the month of May yet so I'm making sure that I get one of those in this evening. I can't wait to show you what's growing in my garden right now, uh, some things that I'm harvesting and some pests that I'm dealing with and to tell you how I'm dealing with those pests. I hope that this video inspires you to grow something in your garden or maybe gives you some ideas about how to deal with things you're already growing. Let's get started and take a look. Okay, so this plant right here is my sun gold tomato. You can see right here I have tied it up to this trellis. I just tied these up last night as we had a break in the rain and it really needed it. It could have used it a while ago. I need to get in here and remove some of these remaining suckers. I um, think I'm going to let this one develop a second maiden stem. Right now I've removed them, most of them, so that it only has one main stem. And actually this one right here, this one has I've let go and is developing into a second main stem. So I'll probably let that one develop or I might let this one develop to kind of let the growth go that way. So as you can see, I've got these dan planted pretty densely. They're a foot to 18 inches apart, depending on the plants. And next to this sun gold is a giant mammoth sunflower. I've got those kind of interspersed in here. Sun golds are one of my favorite tomatoes, so I'm really excited about that one. These varieties here I all picked up from the store. The varieties I grew from seed, which I'll get to later, were only Romas and just a basic red cherry. So I also have some marigolds that I've planted in with my tomatoes. They're supposed to be a great companion plant. And those I picked up from the store as starts. Next to that sun gold, I've got an early girl tomato and it's doing pretty well. It also got tied up last night. You can see it's got a sucker here that's getting pretty large, um, but I have removed most of them down to the base. And in front of those two tomatoes, you can see I've got some peppers there. Those are both bell pepper types. This one is an early bell pepper. And if you take a look in there it already has some flowers developing but the plants only maybe six to eight inches tall so I really don't want it starting to set flowers now because I really want it to focus on more on its green plant growth so once those get a little bit bigger I'm gonna remove them I don't like to remove them when they're so tiny because I'm worried I'm gonna be pinching off some of the growth stems so this is a, a, a bell pepper this one's an early bell this one is a California Wonder. This is a red bell pepper, and those were all purchased from the store as starts. This is another sunflower back there, kind of hiding out. As these tomato plants get larger, I'm gonna be able to prune off back more of these lower leaves, and it's really gonna open up this understory, but I don't wanna do that yet because I need to wait till they take up some of this space up here and have a lot more um, leaves so that they can photosynthesize enough for a good development. Underneath that big leaf there you can see I've got a little bit of Thai basil hiding underneath. These I started from seed. They're still pretty small. Just planted them a couple days ago. And let's see my third tomato. This is a San Marzano from the store. It has some weird stuff going on with its, these two leaves, they're very curled under and deformed looking. Um, not sure what's going on there. If the plant were larger, I would just trim those off. Um, but right now, again, I'm still wanting it to get as much bulk on it as I can before I start pruning and trimming things other than suckers. If I take a look inside it though, it really does need to be pruned. It's got quite a few suckers. There's one, this is just a very tangly plant. So these you can just take your, if they're small enough, you can just pinch them between your finger, your thumb and your pointer finger and pull those right off. 
and there's one in the back I'm just going to grab real quick and that way it can focus more of its growth on that main stem. Most of my plants I'm going to let them develop probably about two to three main stems. This pepper I grew from a start and I this is the first year I or pardon grew from a seed. This is my first year growing peppers from seeds and I sure have learned a lot. And um, one thing I learned is that I need to treat them more like my tomatoes. My tomatoes I started in six packs and then potted up into one gallon pots. I should have done the same with my peppers but I left them in the six packs and I think they would have gotten a lot bigger if I hadn't done that. I've got some more of that Thai basil right there. Another mammoth sunflower. I grew those here last year and just loved it. My husband, I prefer petite tomatoes. My husband prefers bigger beef steaks. So I picked him up this super steak at the store as a start from Fred Meyer and it's doing pretty well. It should develop some pretty large fruits. This one I also need to come through and prune off suckers, only leaving it to the main stems that I want it to develop. I did all this tying up last night, but I did not get a chance to prune, and a lot of these need pruning. You can see here that these leaves here nearest the ground are brown and crumbly. I'm going to want to prune those back because that is not good for the plant, and we don't want that to pass on any fungus or anything to other leaves. So most of the time if you have leaves that are on the ground they're going to do that. This also will happen if you're doing a lot of overhead watering, which I was for a while. But as you can see I've got this soaker hose here set up to water those from the ground. The next tomato is a yellow pear. I'm so excited for this one. It's we're looking really healthy. As you can see, however, I need to prune it. That's just the name of the game with my tomatoes here. My other peppers that I have in here, these are pretty small and some of them are really small. And one of the things I'm not very good at as a gardener is keeping track of what varieties I planted where. I forgot to label these when I planted them out. So these are either a mini bell color mix of different color varieties or a California Wonder standard bell pepper. This last one here, this last tomato in this bed, I started from seed and again when I transplanted them from their six cell packs to their gallon pots I forgot to label them. So this is either a small red cherry or just a plain red Roma. I don't know yet. And then this next 12 foot bed, all of these tomatoes along this back edge are these tomatoes I started from seed, which again are either a red cherry or a red Roma. So it's gonna be a surprise. They're just gonna be all mixed together. I wasn't able to differentiate on what was what but it's a lesson I'm learning as a gardener. If I really want to be organized and keep track, you actually have to write these things down and keep track. The second type of pepper that I grew is over in this box. So it's either the California Wonder or that mini bell. I have a sunflower back here, a mammoth, and look how bad it's doing. I don't know why. It's watered the same as, sorry, bad lighting, as the others, um, but, it's very um, very droopy leaves and so I'm wondering if there maybe something is down there in the soil eating at its roots but it's just kind of limping along so I'm gonna let it stay all right these tomatoes have not been tied up that one I did tie up a little bit but it does not look like it was very successful tying job I don't even know what's going on here um, so these ones still need to be tied up and that's going to really open up this grow space for things in front of it. I've got some Walla Walla sweet onions that I started from seed in February and I really didn't plant a lot of onions this year. I wanted to just kind of experiment with them and experiment with starting them from seed. So I've got them tucked away in a few different places here and there. 
another sunflower and in the back I've got my pole beans. These are Kentucky Wonder pole beans and you can tell there's a lot of competition back there right now but as I get these tomatoes tied up and pruned out it's really going to give the beans some more grow space and apparently this sunflower is not getting the best back there um, and those beans go across the whole back side of this box. I'll also be planting beans in the back of that box and then in the back of that first box that we took a look at over here. I the other day got a potted basil plant from Trader Joe's and separated it into about four different clumps. This is just a, a sweet Genovese, I don't know how to pronounce it, I sound like a dork there, but whatever, um, basil. So your kind of traditional Italian basil. And so I separated it into four different clumps. It's doing really well. Um, after another day or so, I'm going to pinch them back because they are pretty leggy. And when I pinch them back, I'm going to remove that either just those two tiny top leaves or the four, including those ones. And it will start, let me get a little better lighting here for you. It will start developing leaves down at the root or the, the stem here where these other leaves are attaching. So it'll help those really bush out and stand up a lot taller. I'm really excited to get these tied up and pruned back. Give a little more space for my peppers and my basil and my onions. All right, on to this third bed that is along this trellis. This bed is still really rocking the spring garden. I haven't transitioned it much into anything other than the spring garden because it's still getting a lot of shade. So I'm going to plant some beans in here in the next day or two because those will need to get in shortly. Uh, it's got some sunflowers. It has a few broccoli. This one is not even putting on a head yet however this one does have a little teeny tiny head right there so it's doing good gets um a lot of evening light evening sun which is nice these poor sunflowers back here i need to get them staked up they are not doing well i was just thinking earlier how i don't have as many sunflowers planted as i thought but it turns out i do they're just needing some little love to get staked up. Here's some more of that basil that I showed you. This one's doing okay. It's still a little, has a little transplant shock, but it's definitely going to recover. Look how gorgeous this romaine lettuce is. Wow. This one is definitely ready to harvest and we'll be eating that soon. I've already harvested the three that were in front of here and that's what gave me some room for the basil. This is La Cienato kale, and underneath that is some arugula or rocket. We've been enjoying this and harvesting this. This kale will overwinter and provide us some great greens in the spring next year. I planted some spinach about a week ago, and here it is starting to pop up. This corner of the bed stays pretty moist and pretty shady, so I'm looking forward to being able to grow some greens in here through the high heat of the summer. Okay, now we're gonna head down this front side where it's the mound, mounded raised bed. Up here, I've got a little young rhubarb and some blue curled kale. This is great, I love this type of kale. This will also overwinter and give us some great greens throughout the winter and early spring. Next to that, there's more broccoli. This broccoli is green sprouting calabrese broccoli and I thought all the seeds were the same but this variety right here just look at the edges of the leaf and this forms so many side shoots and then compare it to this broccoli where the edges of the leaves are more of a rounded it has that one main head on it so far 
I swear I planted all the same seed, but I'm thinking this broccoli looks like a different variety than that broccoli. These are more of a sprouting broccoli where you're picking off a lot of side shoots. I thought it was supposed to have a large main stem, like, you know, a main head, but they have not done that for me. Next to those, I've got Brussels sprouts. This is a Catskill Brussels sprout. And my broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, and cauliflower are really where I'm having the most pest damage right now. So I'm really struggling with imported cabbage worm larva on my Brussels and other brassicas. You can see those holes there. Those are evidence of the little larva. So the white, there's white moths that fly around, especially on nice sunny days, and they lay eggs on these leaves, most of the time the underside, and then those eggs hatch into little caterpillar larvae that love to just get particularly into that really young growth down there and just munch on those leaves. So I come out here every morning and look for those and squish them and remove them. I post a lot about those in my Instagram stories because it's like a daily thing trying to find those and it's always a fun little hunt. All right, next to this Brussels sprout, I've got a spaghetti squash. I started that from a seed that I saved from my spaghetti squash from last year. And I believe I got them as starts from uh, windmill gardens last year. So I'm gonna let these, these spaghetti squash are a long vining crop. I'm gonna let them, actually that one, I'm hoping is gonna climb down that ladder. Uh, but all of my spaghetti squash, I'm gonna be letting them grow over the edge of this rock wall and then growing down. So vertical gardening, but instead of going up, they will be going down. I also have some annual flowers sprinkled in here and there. There's some snapdragons, more snapdragons hiding amongst the Brussels sprouts. All of my winter squashes are still kind of interspersed with things. Every, every winter squash in this bed is a spaghetti squash. So I'll be training those. Oh wow, look at those. I already have some nice little buds on them. Looking good. Looking good. This is my first time growing tomatillos, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plants, which now that I've been doing more research, I think is a bit excessive. And I didn't know a lot about tomatillos before I started growing them. And I think I should have treated them again more like tomatoes. I should have planted particularly that one deeper in the ground like I would have a tomato and then let these turn into roots. So I also didn't realize I was supposed to be supporting these tomatillos with any caging like you would a tomato, but I don't really have any plans to do that. So they're probably just gonna flop around and do whatever they end up doing. I might even need to end up removing some. There's already some little flowers starting I'm not sure if I should pick them off or let them flower. I listened to a few other YouTubers to try to figure that out. And what I heard was that he said the flowers wouldn't just wouldn't develop into fruit and he didn't recommend pinching them off, but he didn't recommend not pinching them off either. So if you have some advice on tomatillos, I would love to hear it because I've never grown them before. Okay. Here we go, heading to my bush bean section. So I don't know what variety of bush beans these are because I did not keep track of that when I planted them. Um, but I hope they're gonna be delicious, I'm sure they are. In between those, I've got a few little zinnias planted. Doing a little experiment. Some of these slugs got to their first true leaves and like that one and ate them off. And like that one and I'm curious if a slug eats the first true leaves off the plant how will it do and I could have pulled those and planted another but I didn't want 
uh, any beans to be like a week or two behind these because I want to harvest these all at once, move them out and put in a new crop. So we're going to do a little experiment and see what happens. Here I've also got some basil that goes down in between each of these little retaining wall bricks. This is a, oh golly, I forget the variety. It is a spicy blue spice basil, something like that. I'll put it up on the screen what it is. Okay, and one thing I'm so excited about, I've got some volunteer mammoth sunflowers. So last year I planted the mammoth sunflowers in here on this side like I am again this year and those came over here and volunteered and I'm so excited I don't even mind a bit if they end up shading anything out I'm sure those tomatoes over there will still get plenty of Sun I'm not sure if I should stake these though they're completely unsupported around them and I've only grown mammoth sunflowers up against some sort of support so if you have any comments or suggestions or experience please share with me I would love to know so that I can take care of these because I think they're gonna be gorgeous hiding on the other side of that are a couple other zinnias they're still so teeny tiny and a yellow squash plant this was looking pretty healthy if I get in here looks like we've got some flowers that are just developing all right so that was my south terrace area up next i'm going to show you where what i've got going over here in what i call my north terrace so our house is right above this community park area right here it's not a park with a playground it's a they call it the rose garden actually and there's a trail that goes through it it's a great green space for kids to play and I had people walk their dogs there, hang out. I just love to hear them play. I, you might've just heard a kid there having some fun. It's so much fun to kind of beat a spot in our community where we can see other people enjoying our community space and um, say hello and things like that. Plus um, they get to see all the cool stuff that we're growing here. So I really like that because they'll go on walks down there and then they'll go on walks in front of our house too and you know ask us about what we're growing and things like that so it's pretty fun to have that and it's a great view all right so now i'm up here in this north section uh, this section doesn't have that ground cover on the walking path but that is something that's on my to-do list the never-ending garden to-do list so i'm going to give you a tour of what i've got going along in the raised bed box with the trellis and then here in this mounded bed. This mounded bed is, a, is in a really transitional place right now. I'm in the middle of, I've already removed a lot of my spring plants, uh, different brassicas, um, some uh, bok choy, some pot soy, several of the broccolis, and I've got a lot of winter squash planted kind of in place of those and then kind of intermixed in this understory, but you'll see that in just a, just a all right here we go first up is this yellow squash that has is already developing some squash on it looks like this is actually two plants that i did not separate so a lot of times when you pick up starts or when you're growing things from seed you might end up with two growing in the same pot with zucchini i don't mind a lot of my winter squashes i don't mind but other plants it does make a big deal like cauliflower broccoli if you had two of those in the same pot you would definitely want to remove that just down to one these here are early no 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 let me try that again these are cauliflower and they are a early snowball variety and they are doing really well you can see there is some damage from those um, cabbage loopers but I've been really working hard to control that just by picking them off like I told you earlier. So I always like to check down in here where the head is gonna be forming. You can see this leaf has damage from one of those. This is where they, that leaf has damage. Um, that's where they really like to hang out. So I don't get too much in the business of 
peeking in there too deep because I don't want to break any of the leaves, but it's looking okay. One of these has already got a little head developed on it and I wanted to show you in this video. All right, here's the one that has a good head that you can see. It's tucked in there nice, covered by all those leaves so that the head of the cauliflower isn't going to get yellowed. I'm just going to kind of curl it back up in there. As it gets larger, I'm going to want to make sure that head stays protected just because it keeps the color nice on there. You can see I've got nasturtiums planted in between these parts of the rock wall. I'm so excited to see how those end up filling that space out. Between these two cauliflower, there was a cauliflower here, but it died and I removed it. Uh, so here I've got an acorn squash that I grew from seed. This is a table queen bush variety. So it will grow and bush out. And then by the time these cauliflower are done, it will really fill up a lot of this space. Some acorn are trailing and some are bushing. That one is the bushing variety. Here I've got my butternut squash and I've got a little yellowing on the leaves but they're going to pull through that. No worries at all. These ones as you can see I've planted two in the same area. They were together in the same pot. These I grew from seed that I saved from my butternut squash from last year. That was a gorgeous squash that was multicolor half yellow half green and that was a start I picked up at windmill last year and I've got more of them hiding here next to my kohlrabi how gorgeous is that so this kohlrabi I could probably start harvesting the kohlrabi which is good because I need this space I've got some more squash that I need to get into there so oh yeah look at that one I'm gonna harvest that one tonight so after I do this tour, I'm going to do a harvest and then I'm going to show you everything that came out of the harvest. It's just too hard to do the tour and harvest thing at the same time. I'm a little crazy for butternut squash. Here's some more and some more. And again, these are all going to trail over this. So vertical gardening, but instead of going, growing down, they're going to be growing up. Here's more of my Walla Walla Sweet Onions. These ones I started indoors. The other ones I started outdoors. And you can tell these ones have a lot more growth on them than the other ones. This is more of that green sprouting Calabrese broccoli. It's got a lot of side shoot heads on it that have not bolted, which is awesome, especially with the heat we had for a couple days last week. So I'll be coming through here and just harvesting all those little side shoots. This one is still chugging along, but if you take a look kind of down under here, these leaves aren't doing as well. And it's really just kind of thinning out and getting real leggy as a plant. So I'll probably be removing this one, maybe after I harvest those little side shoot heads. Look at, oh, so cool. Those kids are just tearing it up on their bikes. Somebody's going for a walk with their babies so fun to be able to just watch the community like that. All right, this one's full of little heads. Oh, my kids love broccoli so much. That's why I planted so many plants and I'm always so disappointed when they don't turn out, but this is looking good. There's gonna be a great broccoli dinner off of all that. This plant, oh look, this one does have sort of a main head. It's maybe two inches and it's not close to bolting so I can let it grow more and it also does have a lot of side shoots and what's fun about these even though they're not what I wanted um, you get you get a continuous harvest of broccoli over a long period of time whereas when you have one main head you get your main head and then you all are are also likely to get um, side shoots off of that but I just feel like these are really producing. Check out this clematis. There's a white and some light pinks. 
this is their first year in this spot. I bought them last year and they were ravaged by my dog digging them up. And it's going just right up this trellis. You can see it really likes the... I might have to move that one. It is really hooked on there good, but I would prefer it to be a little bit over that way. So I put some twine on there just to give them a little help. Okay, now I'm going to give you the details on what I've got going in this raised bed here, in this 11 foot section, and then the other. This row of carrots is probably about three to four weeks older than this row of carrots. And I, of course, don't have them marked properly, but uh, there are rainbow carrots and then there are petite, sweet, little finger carrots. So um, we'll see what they are when we pull them. Behind those, I've got quite a few different varieties of, of cucumber. And between the cucumbers, I've got blue Victoria salvia. I'm really excited to have these salvias intermix with those cucumbers to attract pollinators to keep all of my cucumbers flowers pollinated. So these two cucumbers were put in from starts from the store. I was a little overly excited and planted them before that was really warm enough. But they are still doing okay. It probably just scented them a little bit. Of course, I did not mark the varieties here. This one I planted as a start of my own. I'm not sure what all the brown leaf damage is from exactly. But I, I'm guessing it has to do with just the temperature fluctuations we've been having. This one is a Market Moor 76. I grow those a lot. I seeded that on April 6th. This one was also seeded on April 6th. And remember today is May 31st. And this is a Garden Sweet Muncher. And these ones I seeded... When I planted this in the ground, I seeded those. Here I've got more Market Moor 76s. Those are looking really healthy. Here I've got mystery cucumbers and more mystery cucumbers. I think I planted some dill seeds in here, but do you see a tag marking anything? No, because I didn't do that. Hopefully we'll see some dill pop up there. All right, here is my last raised bed that I'm gonna show you before I show you the berries we've got growing. So along the back are Cascadia sugar snap peas. The ones in the way back were planted. I started these inside in February. These were planted and start, these were started first. And then these ones were started about three to four weeks after that. Then below those, I've got a lot of beets. There was a row of radishes in front, but as you can see, this bed is like really full. I need to tie these peas up some more to give the beets some more room. So these are either Detroit Reds or Bulls Blood Reds. These are Golden Beets. I love Golden Beets. So easy to tell because they've got more of a yellow tinged stalk. And these have a beautiful red tinge stock. I still could stand to thin out like these. Oops, sorry about that. I could stand to do some more thinning right here. Those two are pretty close. They're just about a finger widths away. So I could thin those, one of those out, and then eat the greens. And down here, oh, I think these are the bull's blood red top. That would make sense. That look at that foliage. It's so gorgeous. And then back there is another round of beets just hiding amongst all those peas. You can see these ones way in the corner are just not doing well. They're just way too crowded out. I should have just done one row of beets, but I got a little overzealous. The peas are just full and really coming on right now. We had that huge rain. Look at all that. Look at all that. 
So I'm gonna be coming and harvesting these, but I just have to sneak one right now. Mmm, they're wonderful. It is just a beautiful, our last May evening. The sky is gorgeous. You can't see the water from here, but it's just over there. Beautiful night. So next up, I'm gonna show you my raspberries, which are right back there, and my strawberries, and my blueberries. All right, this is my berry terrace. It's very awesome. Sorry, bad pun. All right, here, I've got strawberries. These are Shuxon strawberries. Uh, and then on the other back half, I forget the variety, but one is a variety that will set its fruit, a lot of fruit, uh, in the beginning of the summer and then an ever bearing variety. They, I don't have any red ones on there yet, but I do have a lot of berries on there. And I think I'm gonna need to cover them with some netting because the couple red berries I did have, something beat me to them. And then my raspberries, I will, hoping I won't need to cover, but we'll see as they ripen up. So we've got some good looking berries uh, these berries were planted last year and they did not do very well last year. One, because it was their first year, but they just really struggled to early on to be um, watered well. I planted them and then a, a really big heat wave hit. These are just loaded with strawberries. I just hope that we can get to them before any other critters get to them. Lots in there, there's a bunch in there. Not as fun to show you on YouTube when they're not bright red and delicious, but this is what I've got and everybody's strawberries have to be green before they turn red. Oh, they're just gonna be loaded, I'm so excited. Here we've got our raspberries. Oh, and there's two different varieties of raspberries. One comes on all at the same time, and one is also an everbearing. These are loaded. I do not have them staked up yet. I'm thinking this year I can probably get by without staking them up, but I'm thinking next year I will need to provide them some sort of trellising system. They are doing great. They even did great last year. Last year was our the first year uh, I planted them and we had a ton of berries off of them. My kids absolutely love raspberries and so do I. So I can't wait to munch on these babies. And I'm so glad that they've been keeping the bees happy. Oh, wow. Oh, speaking of which, Okay, so my blueberries are planted in my perennial flower bed, and they're here in my backyard as well. I, um, if anyone's interested in what my whole backyard looks like, I would love to do a full backyard tour. Just haven't gotten around to that yet. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing a full backyard tour and maybe even a full front yard tour, leave a comment below and I will make sure I do that. I've been kind of waiting to give a tour of this perennial bed until a lot of these are in bloom, but I've got more food planted here and tonight's tour is all about all the edible things in my garden tonight. So I'm going to be giving a tour of what's edible in my perennial bed and then also I ended up throwing together an annual bed over here that I wasn't planning on. So let's take a look. I wasn't planning on planting this space, but the mulch that we ended up getting was so nutritious and so much more soil-like than bark-like that I was anticipating that I just thought we had to get something planted in here. So I picked up some corn starts. This area doesn't get the most sun, but it is just would be a really beautiful area for corn. So even if this doesn't produce actual ears of corn, I'm just really excited for the visual that we'll provide and then having some corn stalks for decorations. So those really tall ones, I got those as starts from windmill. And then these really teeny tiny ones, I started as a last ditch quick effort because why not give it a try? I've also got some zinnia starts that I purchased from windmill. 
So we've got zinnias, we've got this block of corn, and more zinnias. These ones I planted on a hot day when I shouldn't have, and they were all kind of grown together in clumps, so I had to separate them so they're not doing so hot. And then all of this corn is what I grew from seed, and they're looking pretty happy, and followed by more zinnias over there. So in my perennial garden here, this is mostly just a flower garden with lots of things to attract beneficial bugs and pollinating insects. So here I've got, sorry that's blurry, there we go, a blueberry. Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot to remember which variety is which here. Got three different varieties. This plant is about five years old. And as you can see, it's just loaded. I am gonna need to figure out how I'm going to net this. I have some netting, but just draping it over the bush is not very helpful. So I think I'm gonna put some PVC pipes and make like a modified hoop and we'll see how that goes. Here I've got another blueberry bush. This one's about three years old and it's also just full of beautiful berries. I can't wait for these to ripen up. The birds love them though, so I'm gonna have to make sure that I take good care of getting them harvested quickly and keeping them netted. My third bush over here is not doing as well this year. It didn't put on as much leafy woody growth as I thought it would, and it didn't set as many berries as it has last year. So I'm not sure if it's not happy or if I just did not prune it very well. But you can see here there's some discoloration on the stems. So if any of you have any blueberry tips and can tell me is this stem discoloration a problem? Is this some sort of thing going on or is that just natural and the plant might just not be doing well for other reasons. So I should have pruned it a little bit better and who knows. But it still has fruit and it's still going to be delicious. The rest of my perennial garden I will give you a tour of on another day. That wraps up the tour of my vegetable and fruit garden here at my home. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. It means a lot to me that you enjoy just hanging out, watching me show you what I'm doing in my garden, especially since during these times where social distancing is still a really big deal because of the coronavirus, I can't really hang out with any garden friends. So hanging out with other people, other gardeners through YouTube has been really fun to me for me to just um, get to experience that community without actually being in other people's spaces. I'm really excited for my next couple of garden videos that I've got planned next. My next video is all about how you can start a garden right now. It is not too late. It's gonna be June 1st tomorrow and there's still some things that you can plant from seed or that you can get starts from your local nursery. So watch for that. If you want to subscribe and hit the notification bell, then you'll get an alert every time I post a video. Another video that I'll be posting soon and I'm so excited about is going to pick up some fresh local strawberries and raspberries from a local farm and making jam from those. So if you are looking forward to either of those, then make sure you're checking my channel for upcoming videos or hit the subscribe button and the bell and that way you'll be notified so that you won't have to be checking new YouTube looking for those videos. Thank you so much for watching. It means a lot and I hope you have a wonderful day.